um, this is Miss Litton. And, seriously? Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is AP Bio Review of Chapter 7. And you're really excited about this chapter, yes? Yes! Okay. So, photosynthesis. Is so, the first thing is you know the difference between autotrophs. Oh, poo poo. <laughs> You know the difference between autotrophs and heterotrophs, yes? That's easy peasy. So heterotrophs have to take in preformed organic nutrients, and autotrophs can take the inorganics and make it organic. Perfect. Okay, we talked about, which you need to be familiar with to understand the reactions, we talked about the structure of a leaf, right? And we talked about when we look inside the leaf and we look at a plant cell, and then when we look at a chloroplast. And we know what happens in each region of that chloroplast, right? You have stacks, stacks, these are grana. These look like green hollow pancakes are grana. The space around the grana is what? Stroma. A single, if you just looked at one of those pancake stacks, it would be a granum. What happens on the grana? The what reaction? The light dependent reaction. The light dependent reaction. What happens in the space around the pancakes? Light independent reactions. What's another name for that? What's another name for it? Yes, old school dark reaction. Good. Okay. So then if we break down and simplify the light reaction, the light dependent reaction, and the light independent reaction, if we simplify that, we know that the light dependent reaction is going to make what we need for the Calvin cycle, the light independent reaction, right? Okay, so first of all, if let's, let's work our way backwards. Let's talk about the Calvin cycle. In the Calvin cycle, you are actually fixing CO2 gas from the air into a sugar molecule, okay? What is that going to take? You're going from CO2 to C6H12O6. What are we adding to it? Hydrogen. Okay, so we need a source of hydrogens, and if we're building molecules, we're going to need some energy. energy. So we need a source of hydrogens, and we need some energy. Where are we going to get those things from? We're going to get it from the light reactions, right? Now, we also are going to need a source of carbon dioxide, and where is that going to come from? The air. The air. Now, how does the air get into a plant? Yeah, through the stomata, the openings in the leaves. So as long as those openings on the leaves are open, CO2 can come in, and conversely, O2 can go out. Does a plant need oxygen? Yes. What does it need it for? Cellular respiration. Who does cellular respiration? All cells, right? So you still need oxygen. Does a plant do more photosynthesis or more cellular respiration? More photosynthesis. More photosynthesis, and how do we know that? Because we are alive. And our source of oxygen is the byproduct of photosynthesis, right? So they must have enough oxygen to meet their needs for cellular respiration, and the leftovers are for us, right? Yeah. Okay, so source of CO2 from the air. Now we need a source of energy and a source of hydrogen. That's going to come to us from the light reaction. So the light reaction needs to make some high-energy electrons. Well, its source of the hydrogen and those high-energy electrons is going to be from what? Water. Plants take water and they do what to it? Just break it in half. Hence the source of what? Oxygen and the source of those electrons, right? Yeah. Now those electrons, we need to power them up. So we use what? ATP. No, we don't use ATP. The sun's solar energy. The electrons get excited. At the higher energy level, they can get passed along an electron. Right, and along that chain, some of those like PQ go, mm, and they take hydrogen ions and move it from the stroma to the interior of the thylakoid membrane. Absorb it in the stroma, right? The space around the green pancakes to inside the pancakes. So that's bringing hydrogens inside of those hollow pancakes. Where else did we get hydrogens from? Sweep, sweep. What are we sweeping? From the water molecule that we split, right? We split water, we get oxygen. Right, and that hydrogen consists of two things, one proton and one electron. The protons are in, the electrons get excited, right? So we go through one electron transport chain, and na 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 PQ, right? And we make some ATP, okay? So that gives us ATP, 
That's one of the things we needed, energy to do uh, an anabolic reaction. We're building, using CO2 to build sugar, right? We need energy for that. We need some high energy electrons. Let's take those same electrons, excite them a second time. We use them twice. And we get them excited again by the sun. When we let them go down, we don't let them cool all the way down and lose all their energy. We stop them part way, and who captures them? NADP, and then and it becomes reduced NADP. So you have NADPH, right? Now, out in the stroma, we have both ATP and reduced NADPH. Now, to review how we got, I'm trying to remember, oh yeah, I did push play. Okay, good, I was thinking, I think I forgot. Um, remember those hydrogen ions that were inside the thylakoid membranes? Yeah. They go out, remember, and it's like a turnstile because they yeah. really want to go out because we have a chemi-osmotic uh, gradient, a difference in charge. concentration, pH. charge, and pH. pH. So they are seriously motivated to get out. When they go out, it's like they're going through a turnstile called ATP synthase complex. Right, which is like protein embedded in the thylakoid membrane. So when it goes out, that's how you can put a phosphate group onto ADP, making ATP. So that's where ATP comes. Then remember we looked at NADPH reductase. Remember that? And so when we the second electron transport chain, we end up handing off the electrons to NADP to form reduced NADP. Also out in the stroma. Then we can take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction. Good. Or the Calvin cycle. Or the light independent reaction. The light dependent reaction depends on the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light, for us, what we consider visible light. Different pigments are like solar panels on the roofs of houses that can capture solar energy and turn it into electrical energy. But we turn it into ATP, right? <coughs> Okay, so they harvest, these different pigments will um, harvest different wavelengths of light. So here's chlorophyll A, okay, and it appears green. Why does it appear green? Because it what? Reflects green, okay? But it absorbs the other one. It could also, what else could happen with light? It could be what? Transmitted. Yeah, it's either absorbed or it's transmitted or it's reflected. Carotenoid, that pigment appears orange because it reflects orange light. Different pigments absorb different wavelengths of light and pass it on to chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A is the go at the beginning of the electron transport chain, which starts the na 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 na. You can measure these wavelengths of light using a spectrophotometer, and how effective they are for a plant. For a plant, okay, and this is what's called the action spectrum. These are the wavelengths that are most helpful for a plant. And then we know that as winter comes, light, we don't have as long as light, the wavelengths of light coming in are different, then we get some other colors within that leaf. All right, then, here, do you want to do these questions? Yes. Okay, let's be, something that can absorb energy would be like um, Kirby in the game. So go in as your favorite game name, game character. <laughs> Whoa. And if you don't gain, if you don't gain, go in as your favorite book character. I don't gain. <laughs> Guys, I can't have that kind of stuff. Okay, you can't be writing that about anything about alcohol or anything like that, okay? You can't do that. I can't have that. It's not okay. <laughs> I'm going to pause you for a second. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see. Okay, guys, refocus. Refocus. We have other things to review. The first part of photosynthesis requires all of the above. Okay? Why do we need membranes? Why do we need the thylakoid membranes? For the electron transport chain. Okay. Why do we need water? A source of Water. hydrogens and electrons. Why do we need, shh, don't celebrate ignorance. Why do we need light? Excite the energy to a higher energy level. Good. Okay, yay! Wait, this isn't wrong. 
What color does the pigment chlorophyll not absorb? Green, good. Four, carrots are orange because they absorb false. Good job, wonderful. All right. Now. Oh, crap. I didn't restart, did I restart? Oh, I did restart. Yay for me. Okay, now let's go on. We'll hit the details of the reaction. These kind of diagrams are really good so you get the big picture, right? You're more likely to choose the right answer if you understand the big picture. So light reactions occur on the thylakoid membranes, generating ATP and reduced NADP. It consumes water, right? In order to do that, you release oxygen. You need some CO2 and what you made in the light reaction in order to power up the Calvin cycle, okay? We talked about, there's kindergarten style, splitting water, right? I'm just gonna jump to a little higher level. This is called non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Non-cyclic because electrons come in and electrons go out. Who's bringing in the electrons? Water. No hesitation in that. How are the electrons getting out? Reduced NADP. Okay. The electrons right here are coming in from water, right? Those electrons are getting excited. Ana na 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 na. PQ and you make some what? ATP. They get excited again. Ana na 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 na. And we give them to NADP, forming reduced NADP. So electrons came in and out, non-cyclic. If we take these same electrons, a simpler one, when you're trying to avoid photorespiration, which is neither photosynthesis nor respiration, because there's too much what in the air? And not enough what? Because the stomata are? Because it's really and dry, right? And you're trying to, what you want to try to avoid photorespiration, you might just do cyclic photophosphorylation. It doesn't generate any reduced NADP, it does not generate any oxygen because you don't split any water. Because water is, the splitting of water is what gives you the oxygen, right? And you're trying to have less of that. Okay, so that's cyclic photophosphorylation. Okay, so let's do our song for this and then we'll do the song for this. Here we go. Water, 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 water. What are we gonna do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons. Sweep, sweep. Pause. Sweeping the hydrogens from the water molecule into the thylakoid membrane. The two stands for photosystem. Two. two. And there are two electrons. Here we go. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited, which are on the thylakoid membrane. Ana, na, 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 na. PQ, that is a protein embedded in the membrane that's taking hydrogen ions from the stroma and putting them inside the thylakoid membrane, right? PQ and you make some ATP. Mm. Mm, Cause we're now in photosystem one. How did we make ATP? Hydrogen ions went from the interior to the exterior through ATP synthase complex. Perfect. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons and it gets the electrons excited. And na 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 We're stopping while they still have a lot of energy. Who catches them? NADP. Forming reduced NADP. Then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction, or the Calvin cycle, or the light independent reaction. Perfect. Okay, now. The second song. This right here is that same process, right? Splitting water, na 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 na, PQ bringing in hydrogen ions, they get to go out, make some ATP, get them excited again, reduce some NADP, yes. So, when, when the hydrogen ions hey. go to the ATP complex, that's also due to the uh, chemiosmotic Chem gradient, okay. which was created by the na 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 na, specifically the PQ and the sweet sweet. Right? All right. Now, Let's talk about Calvin cycle. Oh, wait, I have some questions. Yes. Hello, Mr. Pitas. Do you need me here in a second? Let me start this. Girls, remind me to restart this, okay? All right, here we go, here we go now. Oh. 
That was a true statement. Okay, moving on. Now, guys, time. Calvin cycle. Another name for it is the light independent reaction. The old school name was the dark. But that implied that it happened. It had to happen in the dark. It just doesn't need any light. Okay, good. So there are three parts to this reaction. CO2 fixation is when you take the CO2 from the air and you fix it to RUBP, right? A garden tool, not a rake. Okay. And so when you fix it to, so when you fix it to RUBP, that's carbon fixation. CO2 reduction is when you charge it up using what? Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3, right? That's the reduction. And then the regeneration, use some ATP to build 3C5 plus, right? So that's the three parts. Now, can we do the song? Absolutely, we'll do the song. Yes. Do you need me to do this or are you good with this? Okay, and you have this. Okay, so I want to go this long. I want to go through the song slowly first. Did I restart this? I did. I want to go through the song slowly one time so we can name it. So when we go 3C5, who is that? R U B P. Okay. Plus 3C1. Who is 1? Carbon dioxide. So we have 3 R U B P's and 3 C1, right? So we're doing three turns at a time in essence. Right? Yeah. Okay. 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Super unstable, right? Break down to 6C3. Now we're going to charge them up. So we're going to use some ATP, use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. So we have six of them. We can stop right then and we can have three glucose molecules, right? But we're not. We're only going to siphon off what? One. one. If we siphon off one, how many carbons does it have in it? Three. Three. And remember at the beginning, what did we bring into it? Three C1. One. We brought in three carbons and we are taking out three carbons. Right? Right? So we take one away. Old school name is PGAL. New name is G. Three P. Jazz hands. Jazz hands just to get us in the proper formation to say, and you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP, because we're going to rearrange those, right? To build, again, 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Use some ATP and some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away, and now we have glucose. And you're left with 5C3. Use some ATP to build 3C5. Stop. Full thing in the top. Here we go. Focus and don't go faster than my pace. Okay, here we go. Water, 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 water. What are we going to do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons. Sweep, sweep. Pause. Don't forget to go over photorespiration. Thank you. Sweep, sweep. No problem. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Ana, na, 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 na. P, Q. And you make some ATP. Mm. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. And it gets the electrons excited. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Who catches it? NADP, forming reduced NADP. Then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction, or the Calvin cycle, or the light independent reaction. Breathe. There we go. Where are we now? We're in the what? No, 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 no. Where are we in the plant? Stroma. That's what I wanted to hear. 3C5 plus 3C1 makes 3C6. Break down to 6C3. Use some ATP. Use some reduced NADP on your 6C3. Take one away. PJL. 
G, 3P. And you're left with 5C, 3U, some ATP. 2 bills. 3C, 5 plus 3C, 1 makes 3C, 6. We're down to 6C, 3. Mm. Use some ATP and some reduced NADP on your 6C, 3. Take one away. Glucose. Yes, the internal space or the lumen of it. Sure. Okay. That's yeah, perfect. Okay. So the, All right. So the Calvin cycle takes place in the stroma. Yes. All right. Now, G3P is a building block for everything the plant needs. It can get together with some fructose and make some sucrose. You can make fatty acids. You can store starch. You can make cellulose, amino acids. That is your building block for everything else. So the plant is gonna make what it needs, right? It's gonna store the rest as starch, perhaps, or maybe it'll make an oil um, in order to use it when it's ready. Okay, end of that. Here's a question, then we'll talk about photorespiration. I'm giving you 10 seconds to answer it. I don't even know what it is. What do you walk away with when you're done with the light reaction? What do you walk away with? ATP, reduced in ADP. One more thing. Oxygen. Okay. All right. Naughty, naughty RUBP. Stop. RUBP is supposed to hook up with CO2, right? Thank you. Okay. So that is called photorespiration when it does that. And that is not healthy for a plant. It doesn't get it anything. So as a result of that, there are, when it does that, here's the Calvin cycle. Sometimes O2 goes in and binds to it. So there's two different adaptations we're gonna look at. Um, your standard plant, where your vein is, where your xylem and phloem is, the cells around it are called bundle sheath cells. Non-photosynthetic, nothing special, support. Okay, and around it you have palisade and spongy mesophyll where you can do the light reaction and the light independent reaction. But this is an adaptation. Um, photorespiration, it's not as efficient because you don't have as many cells doing the Calvin cycle. You have fewer cells doing it and it costs you a little bit of energy, but the costs must be less than the what? Benefits, otherwise they wouldn't do it at all, right? And what they do is they have a compound called PEP who is never tempted by the fruit of another, who will only hook up with who? CO2, CO2. and escort it into these enlarged bundle sheath cells where the Calvin cycle is taking place. So there, RUBP is only exposed to carbon dioxide, not ever exposed to oxygen. So structurally, here's a bundle sheath cell, and then these mesophyll cells around it. So here is that bundle sheath cell, here's the mesophyll cell, just internally to here would be where you have your xylem and your phloem. And you'd have another bundle sheath, another bundle sheath, and another mesophyll. And out here is where you have your PEP. PEP hooks up with only CO2 and drops CO2 off to your Calvin cycle. It's going to cost you some energy, but overall it's a good idea if you're running with high levels of oxygen, your stomata are closed. Another strategy is called CAM plants. CAM plants fix a bunch of CO2 at night. So yes, their stomata is still gonna be closed. They don't have to worry about bundle sheath cells or anything like that. They just, when the stomata is open, they take advantage of open stoma and the PEP hooks up with CO2, st 
stores it, stores it, stores it. This is a partition in time, right? Not space like the previous one. And then they'll store it at night and then re-release it to it during the daytime when the stomata is closed. Ten questions. I think I'll pause this one. Here we go. Sorry, I gotta go, I gotta go. Okay, real quick. Look at your look at the ones you missed. I'm recording it so you can check it. I'm recording it so you can look at these. I'm recording these answers so you can look at them. Number eight? 3C5 plus 3C1? No. Oh, very funny. I love you.